Generation Chorus, another big hand of praise and gratitude for the hard work that they have put forth. Amen. Thank God for our director of music, Sister Patrice McCauley, and the musicians, musical staff, uh, for preparing that offering of praise. Amen. Lord, give me you. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm I'm excited from what I've heard these beautiful voices have sung on today. Amen. God bless you richly for allowing the Lord to use you in such a great way. Generations Music Ministry. Amen. Are y'all all right this morning? Amen, amen. Just trying to make sure we're in the right place. Generations Music Ministry. Amen. Beautiful shirts. Amen. Beautiful shirts. Beautiful shirts. I love those shirts. The blood still works. Amen. That'll preach right there by itself. The blood still works. And so again, we are grateful to be a part of service of the Lord on this day. We give honor to God our Father, to Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior, and to the keeping power in the presence of the Holy Spirit, to all of our ministers and their families, to all of our deacons and their families, to you, my beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, to those who are joining us online, amen, a part of our virtue church family. It is a blessing to be in the service of the Lord. One more time, God has looked beyond our faults, saw our every need again, and we thank God for this day of celebration. Amen. I want to thank Minister Mann for getting us kicked off on this morning. Amen. God bless him as well. But we are grateful again to be in the house and in the service of the Lord. Question is always raised at this time, at this place. Is there any word from the Lord? And the faithful response is, there is a word from the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I would ask that you would go back with us to Luke's Gospel. Luke chapter 24. Luke's Gospel chapter 24. Getting at verse 44, when you're there, say amen. amen. Here in the gospel as recorded by Luke, 24th chapter beginning at verse 44, we find these words. Now he said to them, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all the things that were written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, so it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance for forgiveness of sins would pre be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Our preaching for the day. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. 
but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Thus ends the reading of the word of God. May the Lord add his blessings to the hearers, readers, and doers. Heavenly Father, again, how we thank you for the privilege of sharing this, your holy and your righteous word. And Lord, as I come, I come with clear understanding that apart from you, I can do nothing. Therefore, Lord, my prayer this morning and this day is that you would increase and I decrease. Lord, I ask that you would breathe again on this, your word, as you breathe on us, your people. Thank you so much for your darling son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the one who was crucified, buried, but rose again on the third day. Not only that, but Lord, he's right now sitting on the right hand of God, interceding for those of us who are called his children. Lord, take this word and you speak to our hearts. To a point, oh God, that once we have heard your word, that we would leave this place rejoicing that we've been with the Lord. You've given each of us an assignment to carry forth from this place. Help us to go down from this place, Lord, and to share your good news that Jesus lives to a dying world. All the glory is yours. All the praise is yours. All the honor is yours. Lord, we want to thank you for the blessing. We ask these and other blessings in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. This is our third treatment of this particular passage dealing with the subject or the theme, a body that starts in motion stays in motion. And then our subject on today is evangelism still is still required. Amen. Evangelism is still required. Amen. Evangelism is still required. On February 11th through February 20th, 2021, in the midst of a global pandemic, Texas was bombarded with a winter freeze. All 254 counties in the state of Texas were declared a national disaster. Meteorologists named it the Great Texas Freeze. State's electrical grid was overloaded with citizens who were seeking power to stay warm, causing the grid to be on the brink of totally collapsing. To reduce the electrical power consumption, ERCOT implemented what was called rolling blackouts. Depending on where you live, power would come on for about 20 minutes and cut off for about 20 minutes. <laughs> Things that we took for granted became a necessity. We went from eating hot cooked meals. Y'all already forgot. We went from eating hot cooked home meals to cold cut sandwiches. We went from taking hot showers to boiling water and taking wipe offs. Are y'all gonna pray with me this morning? Our entire daily routine was altered dramatically. And while the entire state was struggling to stay warm, one of our political leaders who represent the state of Texas on a national level <laughs> thought it would be a good time to take he and his family on a vacation to a tropical resort while the very people who put him in office were struggling just to stay warm. If a power shortage can cause a state as big as Texas to collapse, 
What do you think a spiritual power shortage can do? We're all witnesses each day of what a spiritual shortage is. And as we look at our present spiritual state of the world, we find every day that we are living amongst spiritual darkness. And the one thing that separates us as Christians is that the reality that we have a greater source of power that has never been threatened by the number of people that he supplies. We have the living presence of the Holy Spirit. And as a matter of fact, even before we receive him, the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins, causing us to accept that we are sinners in need of being rescued by his power. He being the Holy Spirit, he being the Holy Spirit, he being the Holy Spirit, he, not it, but he being the Holy Spirit causes us to experience that spiritual power outage and coming to Jesus Christ for our only means of salvation. Looking unto the cross of Calvary and the greatest sacrifice that has ever been paid. One that only Jesus himself could satisfy the righteous demands of a holy God and being crucified for the sins of the world so that by faith you can become born again. Meaning you get another chance to live for him. Another chance to worship him. Another reality to honor him in our lives. In all events, that's why evangelism is still required. In our text this morning, we join the disciples of Jesus at the meeting in Jerusalem on the first Sunday morning after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I had a conversation with a brother the other day who says that he was that we're worshiping the wrong day. Uh, it all started over catfish. And he said, I don't eat catfish. That's against the law. We don't supposed to eat fish with scales that don't have scales on it. And anybody know about a catfish? He's got a smooth skin. He said catfish are the scavengers of the earth, the ocean, and so are lobster and shrimp, all the stuff that we like to eat. He said, I don't eat that. We looked at him, do you eat chicken? He said, I don't, I eat chicken, but I don't eat catfish. He says to us that he was a Sabbath keeper. He says that he does not worship on Sundays because Sunday is not mentioned in the Bible. But to his credit, he was right. Sunday is never mentioned in the Bible. Amen. Because S-U-N is this worship of the sun. Not the S-O-N. But the S-U-N is Sunday. And so he said, I don't worship the Lord. on. I don't worship my God on Sundays. I worship on Sundays. The Sabbath. So I asked him, 
Jesus had to be in the tomb before the Sabbath day. <laughs> I said, right? He said, yes. So on the Sabbath, listen to him. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm not, listen. I said, so on the Sabbath, on the Sabbath, nobody could do anything according to the law. Right? When he did rise from the dead, Sunday is not mentioned. But the Bible says, upon the first day of the week. Sabbath being ended. So what we call Sunday, brother, Sabbath keeper, the Bible calls it the first day of the week. Matter of fact, in Revelation, John said it was on the Lord's day, which is Sunday. So the real issue is what or who do you identify with? If you're a Sabbath keeper, then you identify with Jews, Israelites, and the Hebrews of the Old Testament by keeping the whole law. Thank you, Minister Man. If that's who you identify, you, you want to be a Sabbath worshiper, then you need to live by the law. And I said, let me ask you a question, brother. I say, so, so when you sin, what do you do? Do you have a goat? Do you have a lamb? Do you have a turtle dove? I didn't say if you sin, brother. I said when. If you want to be a Sabbath keeper, then you got to keep the whole law. I wish I had somebody to pray with me this morning. But if you are a Christian, then we identify with the Lord's day, which is the first day of the week. And the Sabbath is viewed as a holy day that points to the promise of eternal rest. In the old Baptist church, when Brother Deacon got down, now first of all, he was sitting in the seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he raised up out the seat, turned around and bowed down. Yeah. And when he came to the end of his prayer, yeah. he said, every day will be Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> and the Sabbath. Will have no end. <laughs> Jesus is our Sabbath. He is our rest. Our rest is not in a day, our rest is in Christ. Y'all, I'm trying to teach this thing because you know some folk that. That's in the same tribe as this brother I was talking with. Because Jesus was the only one who could keep the law. He was the only sacrifice that was acceptable as a perfect sin debt. He invites us to cease from our labor or our works. And when you're trying to keep the law, you're working yourself in a place where you can't keep it. So I just asked him, I said, every time you sin, brother, let me know what happens. Every time you sin, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta sacrifice something. 
I say, when I sin, I sacrifice my catfish. I'm just going to eat my catfish. Pray over it, put some sauce on it. Hush puppies on the side, dress it up real good. Sweet tea, amen, somebody. So when you face folk like this, you got to do some, what we call homework. Minister Man, do you have a mic? Give me, give me Matthew 28 and 1. Y'all write this down, this homework. Matthew 28 and 1. Matthew 28 and 1. Yes, sir. Turn it on. Make sure it's Mike on. Wrong. There I'm we on go. Now. Matthew okay. 20. Yeah, you sound like a Matthew 28 and 1 states. Now, after the Sabbath. Hold on, right there. Hold on. Say it again. Now, after the Sabbath. Hold on. I need to act like Geno Jennings right quick. Say it again. Now, after the Sabbath. Okay, after the Sabbath. Now go. After. As the first day of the week. Thank you. After the Sabbath, on what? The first day of the week. Thank you, sir. Give it to the give it, give, give me Mark chapter uh, 16, verse 1 and 2. And give when me, the Sabbath had passed. Hold on. What did, what did he say? When the Sabbath had, had passed. Had done what? Had passed. No, no. Said it. When the Sabbath had done what? Passed. Passed. Okay, come on. Mary Magdalene. Uh huh. And Mary, the mother of James. Yeah. And Salome mm -hmm. had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. When? And, and very early in the morning. All right. In the first day of the week. What did he say? The first day of the week. What did the Bible say? The first day of the week. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. And they came unto the sepulchre and at the rising of the sun. Thank you, sir. Luke chapter 24, verse 1. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb bringing spices which had been prepared. John chapter, yeah, 20, verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already removed from the tomb. So when you got somebody that, that you just have, you know, you talking about catfish and they get offended because they don't eat it and they take you down this trail of what the Sabbath is all about, I gave you some scripture where you can go and say, no, you're right, brother. You don't, you know, Sunday is not uh, in the Bible, uh, but the first day of the week is repeated in the gospel. Do y'all hear me this morning? Y'all going to hear me preach this morning? See, see, watch this. Never waste your time arguing the text. Because if, 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 if one cannot articulate what is written, then don't argue with them. What we are concerned about is what a term is called apologetics. Apolo Everybody say apologetics. Apologetics simply means defending the faith that is written. All right? That's why evangelism is important. Don't let anybody get you all confused and then you come to me talking about, Pastor, we worship on the wrong day. No, don't come to me with that. So when the women went to the tomb, Sabbath had what? Ended. And they went on, the gospel writer says, the first day of the week. What did Jesus say concerning the Sabbath? Jesus said it like this. Jesus says, he says, Sabbath was made for man not man for the Sabbath. Even on the Sabbath, he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus did his most of all of his healings when on the Sabbath 
day. I sure wish I could preach this. And if you desire to evangelize the lost, be prepared to do what Timothy says. Study to show thyself approved. Unto who? Unto God. A workman not being ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And not only that, but you got to also be like Paul. In Romans chapter 1, 16 and 17, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Listen to this. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, Paul says, the just shall live by faith. And I believe evangelism is still required by, by observing two spiritual truths that this text speaks to. I believe the first truth that this text speaks to is power is embedded in our personal experience with the risen Christ. Did y'all hear what I said? Power is embedded, which means it's already within us. In our personal experience with the risen Christ. Jesus says, you are witnesses of these things. What things were he talking about? He was talking about being witnesses of the law, the prophets, and the Psalms speaking on his coming. Not only that. But he was a, they were witnesses of his crucifixion. They were witnesses of his sacrifice on the cross. They watched them put him in the tomb. They waited till after Sabbath was over. They saw him live and presented from the dead in bodily form. Jesus says you are witnesses of these things. Now, in order for us to be, I won't say good at evangelizing, but for us to be able to understand what God is requiring of us is that, first of all, the best person who you can evangelize is yourself. Amen. Amen. Don't go out trying to tell other folk to live for Jesus when you're not. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. We got to start with us and be witnesses of the things that he has done in our lives. Woo. Let me just stop right here and raise one question. Has the Lord done anything in your life? that nobody else could do? Has he done anything in your life that has caused you to live different? Come on, y'all help me this morning. Jesus says to the disciples, you are witnesses of these things. Power is embedded in your personal experience. A personal experience with the risen Savior. A personal experience. See, when we were, hey, listen, Rob, when we were coming to church as this little kid, we just came to church because we, we didn't have a choice not to come. Sister, Baptiste, sisters, can y'all help me today? See, we came up in the old church. <laughs> we came up in the church when, 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 when it didn't matter how you felt. You going to church. 
Amen. Somebody preach with me this morning. You can sit there and lay in your bed until you ain't. Hey, now you getting up out that bed. If you are sick, you're going to be sick in church. I think I got some old school church folk in this house. Now we didn't have no excuses. Either you, either, either you came to church or you got the belt. <laughs> Deacon Dave wasn't no laying up in the feet, scratch, wasn't no laying up in the bed, scratching your feet and all that. No. When this car move, you gonna be in it. Amen, somebody. All that old crying and I don't fear. No, nah, we didn't do all that. Because, because see, listen, the minute you start crying, mom say, boy, shut your mouth. Let me give you something to cry for. <laughs> yeah, ma'am. <laughs> and you came, <laughs> you came on the church. Some about after you came, seemed like, seemed like things was just so much different when you went back home. <laughs> We got to share our personal experience with the risen Savior. That's where evangelism starts. Because if he's done something, any, anything in your life that you could not do, then you are a witness. Let me check the room. Anybody in the room can witness that he healed your body? Anybody in the room can, can witness that he made a way out of no way, is there anybody in the room that can attest to the fact that when I was down to my very last dime, he came in right on time? <laughs> then you can be a witness that Jesus is able. I'm not going to preach long, I'm almost through. Power is embedded in your personal experience with the risen Christ. He's touched your life in a way unlike anyone else could. He made us see our purpose in this life. You know, folk want to chase after other things and other gods, but... There's only one who's worthy to be worshiped and praised. So power is embedded in your personal experience. How do you know him? See, we knew him based on our foreparents. And I was like that little boy that went to that far country. Lost everything. Then start looking back home. I'm not the only one. Because when, when you got tired of coming to church, you, you, made, you made a vow that I'm not going to have my children in church every Sunday. I know I'm right about I know I'm right somewhere. See, we were made to come to church. And when we got older, we say, you know what? I'm not going to make my children go to church. How'd that work out? <laughs> but when you've been in the hog pen, eating husk, then the father's house looked good. <laughs> Power is embedded in your personal experience with the risen Savior. Everybody in this room have experience what God can do. Am I right? What he has done and what he is willing to do. That's enough to be a witness and to evangelize. So power is embedded. It's, it's within the fabric of our faith in our, in our realization that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? 
That news is good enough to share it with anybody. But then, secondly, power comes when God's promise is present in our lives. Power comes when God's promise is present in our lives. Verse 49 says, and behold, this is Jesus talking. I'm sending you forth the promise of my father upon you. But you stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Jesus now, Olivet, encourages his disciples to be prepared to receive the promise of my Father. He prepares them to position themselves to be in receiving mode by waiting patiently for the promise to show up. In a few days from now, these disciples will be introduced to a power that cannot be denied. A few days from now, they would be exposed to a power that would ultimately change their lives. In a few days from now, they will experience what the Bible calls the pouring out of my spirit upon all flesh and our sons and our daughters shall prophesy old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions he was trying to get them to understand that what they had seen thus far the resurrection from the dead is only the tip of the iceberg because we normally don't see the base of the iceberg because it lies beneath the surface of the waters. That in which the naked eye is not able to see. So the Christian life is something like an iceberg. And that what is seen on the surface can never compare to that which cannot be seen beneath the surface of the waters. Evangelism is still required and that God has a power plant that resides in the blood of Jesus Christ. God's power plant will never be like ERCOT electrical grid unable to handle the demands of power usage. He instructs them to wait on the promise of the Father. In other words, you can't go forth as my witness until you're filled with power from on high. Power comes when God's promise is present in our lives. Y'all with me this morning? The word clothe simply means put on. It simply means to be covered with. And Jesus is saying in just a few days, you'll be wearing some brand new clothes. They will look new. They'll smell new, and it will be new. Take off your old grave clothes, grave clothes of sin. Put on God's glorious clothes. Walk in the righteousness of God. Power comes when God's promise is present in our lives. And church, God's promise is the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost power. Because the Holy Ghost 
is the power that can turn a fearful person into a faithful witness. The Holy Ghost power can make a liar tell the God's honest truth. The Holy Ghost power will make an unbeliever be like the Philippian jailer come running asking what must I do to be saved. The Holy Ghost power can turn a wino into a witness of God's grace. Holy Ghost power would take a skirt chaser and make him a deacon. Holy Ghost power can take a thief and make him into a preacher. Holy Ghost power can take a woman of the evening and make her a woman that's made to worship. Holy Ghost power is present in the lives of those that call Jesus Lord and Savior. And I found out, Olivet, I'm on my way to the house, but I found out, yeah, that uh, God that we serve, that God loves Cracker Jacks. I said, the God that we serve love Cracker Jacks. How many of us, when we were small children, some of us, when we went to the store, we wanted candy. Some of us wanted Snickers. Some of us wanted Hushes with almonds. Some of us wanted Reese's peanut butter cups. Some of us wanted M and M's. Some of us wanted the heat bars. Some of us wanted Milky Ways. Or some of us wanted Three Musketeers. But then some of us wanted a box of Cracker Jacks. Had that box with the sailor boy that was on front of the box. Had a dog on the side. This generation don't know anything about the Cracker Jacks. They call it Crunch and Munch. Have I got a witness? But I believe that the Lord himself loves Cracker Jacks. It was nothing like opening the box of a brand new Cracker Jack box because it had the caramel glaze of popcorn. Are y'all gonna pray with me? It had some uh, peanuts in the popcorn. Ain't God all right? But every time that uh, we bought a box of Cracker Jacks, uh, it wasn't about the popcorn. Uh, it wasn't about the peanuts. Uh, it was all about uh, the prize uh, in the box. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, and I stopped by here to tell, uh, to tell somebody uh, that you are the prize uh, that God uh, was looking for. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, you are the prize uh, in the Cracker Jack box uh, of this world. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, some folk chase uh, silver and gold, uh, but I'm so glad today uh, that you are the prize uh, of God's eye. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, I'm so glad. 
I said I'm glad uh, that when he opened uh, up the box uh, that he saw uh, a prize uh, that's worth dying for. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I said I'm glad. Uh, I'm really glad uh, that he looked beyond uh, all of our faults uh, and simply said, y'all, uh, that you're my child. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, tell your neighbor, uh, say, nay, neighbor, uh, oh, neighbor, uh, I'm so glad. Uh, I said I'm glad uh, that I am. A child of God, I'm so glad that his power lives in my heart. Ain't God all right? Tell somebody that I'm not always been this way, but I met a man by the name of Jesus. Ain't God all right? What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, here's a song on a hill far away stood an old a rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame but I love I said I love I said I love that old cross where the dearest and the best was slain for a world of sinners ain't God alright you ought to stand up and testify that I got power unlike the earth have. I got power that never runs dry. I got power to love my enemy. Power to love my friend. I got power to forgive those that despise me. I got power to turn a bad situation into a situation where God gets the glory. Tell your neighbor, I got power, Holy Ghost power. And there's nobody like the Holy Ghost that can do us the way he does. And I'm so glad, I said I'm glad that one day somebody thought enough about me to tell me about a man named Jesus. Ain't God all right? Well, what did they tell you, Pastor? They told me that God so loved, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What else did they tell you? They told me that he died out on a hill, a hill called Calvary, that he died for your sins and mine. What else did they tell you? They told me they buried him in an old rugged tomb. Ain't God all right? A brand new tomb by a man named Joseph. What else did they tell you? They told me that he laid in the grave all Friday night. He laid in the grave all Saturday night. But what else they tell me? They told me that early, I said early, I said early, I said early. Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Holy Ghost power, keep going power. Don't stop, can't stop. That kind of power, ain't it all right? I say, ain't it all right? Shout a yeah, shout a yeah, shout a yeah.
evangelism is still required. Can I ask you a question? You're on your way to heaven. If you're in this room today and the Lord shall touch you on your shoulder and say it's time to come home. Let me ask you a question. How many of us in the room is assured based on your confession, based on your belief, based on what the Bible has said? How many of us in this room is certain that when you close your eyes, you're going to heaven? If you can't raise your hand up, you need to come. If you can't raise your hand up, you need to come. Because everybody that has have their hands in the air have come to the reality that they've made their confession to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Now let me ask you another question. Since you know that you're going to heaven, how many other people do you want to take with you? Heaven is too, too great of a place for us to get there alone. Evangelism is seeing how many folk do you want to take with you? How many people will be there because of your seed that you planted in their hearts? Didn't say that you want them, it just said that you planted the seed. Paul says, one man planted, another man watereth, but God gives the increase. We're just seed planters. How many do you want to take to heaven with you? There's a lot of things, that, there, there's so many things that, listen, evangelizing is one thing that we can't do in heaven. We won't need to do evangelism in heaven. Some of us will get before God, get before Jesus on that day. And we'll, 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 we'll stand there. And most of us and many of us will, will come to realize that we didn't share him enough. All of it. God is asking and seeking us to share the gospel everywhere we go that's part of our mission statement church is standing sharing the gospel message everywhere we work with people 40 hours a week and never talk about Jesus Sin is powerful, but the Holy Spirit is more powerful. The only way you can help people from sinning is to introduce them to a power that can break that sin. And I'm not the one to sit here talking about, I serve a higher, the God of higher power. No, I serve the Lord. I serve Jesus Christ. I serve Yahweh. I serve God. Don't stand before me talking about, well, you know I serve the, the higher power. No, nah, I ain't no higher power than God. Call him who he is. Don't give me these bird whistles and all that kind of stuff. Claim him as God. Serve him as the Lord. Is there one today? Is there one today? The doors of the church are open. You can come just the way you are. You ought to know him just the way you are. Get to know him. Right now. Right now. Today. Just come. 
nothing better. There's nothing better. Oh, just the way you are. Than knowing Jesus. He gets sweeter. He gets sweeter as the day go by. You are the a great amen. Amen. Give the Lord a great amen. I was to extend yours to accept or reject. Again, thank God for you on today. Thank God 